Welcome to the video session of UP8004 Applied Physics course. In this session, we are taking the tutorial sheet number seven, where we have the polarization. So in the following, there are seven problems and they deal with uh, the different uh, uh, aspects of polarizations that we covered in uh, the lecture. And if uh, I have also uploaded the lecture in a different uh, playlist. So if you like, you can go through the lecture first and then come back to the this tutorial video again to have a better grasp of the required materials and understanding so here the first problem is that a glass plate is to be used as polarizer find the angle of polarization for it also find the angle of refraction given that the refractive index mu for the glass is 1.54 so for this let us take this problem to our worksheet so this is our question number one so this first part that the glass plate is going to be used for the purpose of a polarizer that means in this case we are talking about polarization of light by reflection so what happens is if you have a surface and there is an incident light which is unpolarized so it's direction of the electric and magnetic field of all the photons present in this beam of light are randomly oriented so unpolarized light so there exists a particular angle of incident for which the reflected ray will be polarized so here the plane of polarization is this plane which contains the incident ray reflected ray and the normal to the surface then on the other hand the refracted ray is still not polarized so in this case it's still unpolarized and this particular angle for which the reflected ray is polarized is called the Brewster's angle and it can be shown that the refractive index of the material mu is 10 of this polarization angle so find the angle of polarization for it so as the refractive index is given for the material so angular polarization is equal to 10 inverse mu is equal to 10 inverse 1.54 which turns out to be is equal to 57 degrees so that's the incident angle what would be the refraction angle that again can be calculated from the snell's law which is mu is equal to sin i by sin r so in this case the sin i is the incident angle theta p so r is equal to sin inverse sin theta p by mu so sin inverse sin 57 1.54 is equal to 33 degrees also this r can be calculated like this it also can be shown that theta p plus r is equal to 90 degrees and this would imply that given this theta p is equal to 57 r is equal to 33 degrees so that's our question number one let's now check out this next question so in this next question so here it says two polarizing sheets have their polarizing directions parallel so that the intensity of the transmitted light is maximum yes therefore through what angle either sheet is turned so that the intensity becomes one half of the initial bit. okay so let's take it to our worksheet so here in this case we have two polarizing sheets so when their x's are parallel then let's say the intensity is i not the initial setup then we change now let's say the second one was rotated by some angle with respect to the first one let's say that angle is theta and in that case this intensity is i so given i by i naught is equal to half so it says when you rotate one of them the intensity becomes one half of the initial value so the ratio between them is one half however from Melu's law we know i is equal to i naught plus square theta what this law says this law says that if you have two polarizing sheets or polaroids and if they're parallel so then the light that passes through is maximum but if you rotate one of them the light would decrease by how much it would decrease by an amount which is a factor of cos square theta where theta is the angle through which you have rotated one of them so with these we have i by i naught is equal to from here 
half is equal to cos square. So implies theta is equal to cos square square root of 2, which is 45 degrees. So this result says either you rotate one of them by an angle 45 or you rotate by 135. Both are same because this axis direction is symmetric. So that's our question number two. Let's look at question number three. Two knee holes are first crossed and then one of them is rotated through 60 degree. Calculate the percentage of the incident light transmitted. Let us take our problem to our worksheet. So we have question number three. Two nickels are first crossed and then one of them is rotated through 60 degrees. Calculate the percentage of the incident light trans. Again, nickels makes unpolarized light into polarized light. So if two of them are crossed, that means the angle between them is 90 degrees. So let's say the situation is like this. We have one nickel at its axis like this and we have another nickel which is like this. So this is our nickel number one, this is our nickel number two. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. But then one of them is rotated by an angle 60 degrees like this. Let's say we have rotated the nickel number two by 60 degrees. So earlier it was here and then it gets rotated. So now what do you have? You have an angle this or this as 30 degrees. So after rotation of 60 degree, you have the angle between them, theta is equal to 30 degrees. So calculate the percentage of incident light that gets transmitted. Now let's see the situation again. So we have incident light, let's say I not, and here are here is our situation. Two nickel prisms placed close to each other with angle 30 degrees. This setup here is placed one after another. So what would happen? Let's say this is our first nickel and this is our second. Incident is I0. Let's say this is I1 and this is I2. Then I2 is given by I1 into cos square theta. Mel is low. I1 is one half of I0 considering this is unpolarized light. So how much is I2? I2 is half of I0 cos square 30 degrees. And this gives you 3 by 8 I0. So the percentage of light that goes out is 0.375 I0. That means 37.5% of I0. So when one of the nickel is rotated by 60 degrees, then 37.5% of the initial amount gets transmitted. Your initial amount is this unpolarized light intensity. So this ends our question number three. Let's look at question number four. So we have light of irradiance 1000 watt per meter square is shown through a two polarizer with the transmission axis placed at a relative angle of 40 degrees. What is the intensity of the transmitted light if third polarizer is placed at an angle 20 degree between the other two? What is the irradiance in that case? So this is our question number four. So here we have two polarizers. So here is polarizer one, here is polarizer two. The angle between these two is 40 degrees. And there is a unpolarized light of intensity, 1000 per meter square of power, 1000 meter. Here is an unpolarized light with power, 1000 watt per meter square. Then, what is the transmitted light? So again, let's say this is I0, this is I1, this is, then from the last example, I2 is equal to half of I0 cos square theta. So in this case, theta is equal to 40 degrees. So I2 is equal to 1000 cos square 40 degrees is equal to 293.412 watt per meter square. Now, next question is that now, between these two, there's a third one. So the situation is now, we have our first polarizer like this. Then the third polarizer is our earlier second polarizer. And there is a second polarizer now. So the angle between these two is 40 degrees. And the middle one is such that it has a 20 degrees angle with the first one and again 20 degrees angle with the second third one now what is the irradiance so again this is i0 this is let's say i1 this is i2 this is i3 so i1 is equal to half of 
I naught. I two is equal to I one cos square twenty degrees. Similarly, I three is equal to I two cos square twenty degrees. Therefore, the final intensity I three is equal to I one cos square twenty degrees. Uh, this is the replacement of I two, then cos square twenty degrees, which is half of I naught cos to the four twenty degrees and thousand and this is equal to three eight nine point eight six or per meter square. So this is the final intensity in the second case. So let's look at the next problem. Here we have unpolarized light of intensity. 32 watt meter square passes through two polaroids such that the intensity of the emerging light is 20 watt per meter square. What is the angle between the axis of the polaroids? So let us take this to our worksheet. So we have now the question number five here. So we have unpolarized light of intensity 32 watt meter per meter square. Two polaroids. One is this. Let's say another is some other angle. Then we have unpolarized light of 32 watt per meter square. And here polarized light 20 watt per meter square. What is this? angle between these two that's the question so now from Melu's law the intensity at the very end is given by i1 cos square theta which is nothing but i naught by 2 cos square theta implies 20 into 2 divided by 32 equal to cos square theta so on the left hand side here this is more than 1 and the value of cos square theta more than 1 cannot happen so this is greater than 1 and this cannot happen that cos square value is more than 1 so such a situation can never help. Simply speaking you can see if this incident is 32 then here in the middle it should be half of this 32. So half of this 32 is 16 watt per meter square but the intensity after crossing the second polaroid intensity cannot increase from 16 to 20 and that's why such a situation can never arise so the theta is impossible with the given input and the output intensities so this is our question number five so the question number six says calculate the thickness of double reflecting crystal to introduce a path difference of lambda by two between e and o rays where lambda is equal to six thousand mu for o ray refractive index for o ray is 1.55 and e ray is 1.54 so this is our question number six so there is a doubly refracting crystal and let's say t is the thickness so incident ray and you have two rays e ray o ray so unpolarized light comes in becomes polarized and separated into two rays e ray and o ray o ray means ordinary ray follows snell's law e ray doesn't follow the snell's law extraordinary rays now the refractive index for the ordinary ray is given as 1.55 and that of the extraordinary ray is 1 the wavelength of the light that is used is 6000 angstrom now the question is what should be the t so that there is a path difference of lambda by 2 let's say this is path difference lambda by 2 how much this t should be so that this path difference gets introduced so if path difference is lambda by 2 then phase difference must be is equal to pi this path difference is created due to something called optical path so the light as it travels from the left side of the material to the right side a geometric or a physical path that at this distance that it covers is this t but there is a difference in their optical path so the optical path for e ray is given by mu e into t and for e ray this is given by mu into t so what is the difference between these two so path difference between these two is mu e difference mu naught into t and it says that this path difference must be equal to lambda by 2 and for this how much t should be so t is equal to lambda by 2 1 over mu e minus mu naught and you take the difference means the absolute value so 6000 divided by 2 1.55 minus 1.5 and this gives you 3 into 10 to the minus 3 centimeter so this is 
our result. Next, we look at the last problem, which is problem number seven. So this problem number seven says, given the polarization of the different component of a light field, the electric component of the light field is this A and B like and you are supposed to say what kind of polarizations do they have. Now to understand this we have to first talk about one concept and that is called Lissagius figures and we are not going much detail into these figures but essentially what it says is this we have two vectors EX UI in this perpendicular directions and then there is a resultant vector e. The resultant vector is given by ex plus ui. Now if ex is equal to and ui is equal to so so now what is this ex and ui? These are just like some oscillations. Ex has a phase phi 1 and ui has a phase phi 2. Then what you can show is from here you can actually show that ex by e naught square let's say this is ex e, ey plus ey by ey zero square minus two ex by ex naught ey by ey naught cos of phi two minus phi one is equal to sine square phi two minus phi one so you can actually derive this you can get this derivation in any standard book on oscillations now in our case the ex is given as e naught cos omega t plus kz and ui is given as e naught cos omega t plus kz plus pi if we compare this with our assumed form here assumed form here then what we find is phi 1 is equal to 0 phi 2 is equal to pi so phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to pi. So with this from here, what do we get? Ex by E naught. So here, this these are both same and that is E naught is equal to plus Ui by E naught minus 2 Ex Ui by E naught square. So cos phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to 1. However, the other side is 0. So this would imply that ex plus or rather plus ui square is equal to 0 in plus ui is equal to minus ex so this is nothing but a equation of straight line so that means that the resultant e in this case which is the resultant of ex and ui so this e vector would move in a straight line so when a electric field moves or oscillates in one single plane then we call it plane polarized light so it's like the light is traveling towards us coming out of this surface and its electric field is oscillating along this line case b in that case phi 1 is again 0 phi 2 is phi by 2 so phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to phi by 2 and then you get this one as ex by e naught square plus minus 2 ex ui now this is 0 and on the other hand this is 1 so this implies ex square plus ui square is equal to e naught square so that's like a so this ex and ui follows a circle in that case what you would have is that now ex ui the resultant would be such that the resultant field goes in a circle with the radius e naught so circular polarization so now in this case it's like the resultant electric field is moving in a circular fashion and it's as it is coming out of this surface towards this from so this is this the third axis so along this direction this is coming out of the surface so the polarization of the electric field would be circular polarization in the first case it's plane polarization so with this we end this was our last uh, tutorial problem for the tutorial number six polarization and this ends this session of this video